Welcome. As some of you may recall, last year I made uh, some really nice small little jars for pit fire. From a functional point of view, they turned out great, but not so much from a coloring point of view. They became too dark and I didn't really see much of the wonderful pit fire color. So today we're going to do it again, but better. Just like last time, I'm going to use this uh, wonderful clay that I love so much. It's uh, from Jolson Schneider in Germany, called 551. It's high iron clay, as you may see <laughs> from the color, and it burns really dark. It has a lot of grog in it, 40%, but it's very fine grog, so I can make the surface completely smooth. But the high amount of grog makes it very uh, sustainable to, um, to the thermal shocks in a pit fire. The, brutal way of firing. So it's a very stable clay to use for that, and I love throwing in it. However, with the dark surface, it becomes more difficult for the delicate colors of a pit fire to, um, to show on the pot. And that was the problem with the, the first pots that I did. They, um, they looked nice, the shape was nice, they functioned well, but there wasn't so much of the pit fire colors that I like to see. So this time I'm still going to throw it in this clay, but I'm going to add a layer of porcelain and white tearsic ladder. That should give me a better canvas for the colors of the pit fire. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and make these pots. Just like last time, I'm going to throw them in two pieces, the jar and the lid. And then I'm going to uh, adjust the lid uh, in the trimming stage to fit the jar. I'm not going to measure how much clay I'm going to use uh, for this because I'm not going to make multiple pieces the uh, same size, so I'm just going to eyeball it and uh, approximately use about one kilo for the jar and uh, some less, maybe half a kilo for the lid. And as you will see, uh, I'm going to use the same technique as last time and I'm going to make the lid much bigger than I need and then I'm going to trim it down to make it perfectly fit the jar. It's always good to, um, to do perfect centering, uh, but for a little jar it's even more important because if the gallery where the lid is sitting is not perfectly round, it's a little bit oval, uh, it's going to make it impossible for the lid to fit um, perfectly. So uh, always pay a little more attention when doing a jar. Other than that, it's just throwing a pot, like always. Um, I'm not gonna trim a foot on this one, so I wanna have um, the bottom fairly um, thin. But always make sure that you um, compress the bottom well. Oh. <laughs> And for um, the little jars, you need to keep a lot of clay at the top because we need that for the gallery. Of course, always make sure that the top is centered and then it is compressed. So for each pole, I just compress the rim a little bit and make sure that it's still 
send it. Now we still have too much clay down here. So we can get some of that up and working. So now I have the basic shape of the jar that I want. And uh, now it's time to do the gallery. And this is um, without a doubt the, the most tricky part of, um, of doing the jar, besides fitting the lid. But, um, but this part is uh, crucial to, um, to the functional quality of, um, of the jar. So I wanna make sure that the top is flat and see also how thick it is. Um, we need that because we're basically going to split the rim um, in the inside the gallery and the outside of the of the rim. There are, of course, many ways that you can do uh, the gallery. Uh, I usually just use a finger. Um, just make sure that it's uh, wet enough. Um, you can also use a rip. Um, some people prefer that method. Uh, let me just find one that suits this one. You need one with a sharp corner. So it may be a little more easy to do that. So I'm going to put it like about halfway in to the width of the, of the rim. I'm just going to gently push it down. I'm going to support it underneath. See? That's going to create the gallery. Now, of course, we need to <laughs> shape it up a little bit, perfect it, smoothen it. Um, but basically, this is it. You got to watch out not to make um, the gallery too thin because, well, there's a risk it will break off during usage. And also, I don't like the, the gallery to stick out too much. But that's a matter of taste. And how you're going to use it, of course. During the trimming stage, I may just shape the, 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 the vertical um, ball um, to make sure that it's completely sharp. Um, that makes the lid fit better. But that's it. That's the first part. Just going to trim the, the foot here a little bit for the excess clay. i can trim that away anyway. So just as well, take some of it now. And that's it. I just want to make sure that there's no water left in the bottom. It's very, very little, but you don't want any um, any water to soak down there because that's going to increase the risk of um, S cracks. So now it's ready to um, dry and uh, then I'll do some trimming. So I will leave that for tomorrow. So let's do another one. So I think this one got a little bit better, but um, that's just how it is when you um, just throw on inspiration. <laughs> you know, sometimes the clay just want to do what the clay want to do. I know that's not very professional to say, but I'm not very professional either, so it's okay. <laughs> so I think this one is ready for um, drying a little bit. So. Um, I can trim it. It'll be tomorrow. The first ones was uh, not so big, small jars for whatever you like. Maybe some jewelries, maybe candy if you don't eat that much candy, or garlic, whatever you want. But I also want to make some that are a little bit bigger. So let's do that. It's basically the same procedure. I think this is maybe one and a half kilo or something. So still not a super big jar, but bigger. I 
I always um, take out the water in the middle, uh, even though I know I'm going to drip in more, but I just don't want it to soak in, uh, because the more it does that, the more it weakens, um, and um, increase the risk of, um, of its cracks in the end. So I think I just need to pull a little more. I just remember it's super important to have enough clay at the top because otherwise you won't have enough for your gallery. So better to have too much, you can always thin it out, but um, if you have too little, it's just gonna be a very weak uh, gallery. I mean, it's always a good idea to have even sized walls. They can be a little bit thicker down here, a little bit thinner on the top, but um, especially for pit fire, I found that if the walls are too uneven um, due to the thermal shock of this uh, way of firing, it's more likely that they will crack. So it's even more important to, um, to throw with even sized walls. I know there are many ways to, um, to throw the shapes. I like a little bit of a rounded body. Some people do that right away. I think it's easier to start out with the cylinder and then do a bit of shaping in the end. But I mean, whatever works for you, works for you. And then of course, depending on what you're gonna use the jar for, you may wanna leave the opening narrow-ish, as it is here, or wider. If it's something where you need a big spoon to get in, of course you need a wider, otherwise you won't be able to pull it up. Um, in this case, it's more gonna be, I think, maybe garlic or something. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna make it too big, but um, I hope it's gonna work. The last thing I do is making the gallery because um, after I make the gallery, I don't want to distort the pot at all. I want it to be completely perfect circular. And if I start doing more and move the pot around, then I may distort it and make it more oval and um, then the lid won't fit. So um, it's the last part of um, the throwing. As you see, I do actually prefer to initially make uh, the gallery with my finger, but sometimes I use um, a sharp cornered uh, rib to just um, perfect the shaping of it. But I think I have a better feeling with, um, with my fingers when I, when I do the initial um, expansion. Sometimes you end up with a gallery a little bit too wide, but you can still cut it off. You can do it now or you can do it when you trim. I will just show you how I do it now. Just use a needle tool. That's, and then of course you need to <laughs> grab what you cut off. And um, I'm just gonna shape it. First with my fingers and I may use a sponge as well. Just to make sure that it's smooth and nice. I don't want the gallery to be any bigger than what it have to be to uh, support the lid. And um, I think this is plenty. I may even trim it down just a little bit after. I'm just gonna cut away some of the excess clay down here. I will do that anyway when, when, I, when, I, um, when I trim it. And um, by doing it now, uh, this doesn't have to dry. So it just makes the whole drying process a little more. Quick. So, that was another jar. I'll do one more and then uh, we'll move on to, um, to do the lids. So now this looks more like the size of candy jar that I like. <laughs> and now the lid of the gallery. You also have to consider how deep you want to make it. Um, if you want the lid to, um, to level 
with uh, the rim. Then uh, don't make it too deep because then the lid is going to be very heavy. Um, you can also have a design where it kind of sits into it, so it kind of jump into the uh, sink into the um, the pot. It's a matter of taste. I mean, you can do both. Um, in this case, I'm going to make it a little bit deeper because it is a bit wider. So I want a lid that is a little more heavy. Again, I'm just going to perfect the angle here with the rib. And I can also adjust this during the trimming stage. But the better it is now, the less work I have to do in trimming. So, I think that's it. Now it's time to do the lids. I'm going to do them the same way that I did last time. So I'm basically going to throw them oversized, way too big. And then tomorrow, when I'm trimming, I will trim them down to the size of each of the pots. So that's a very easy way to do it, because I don't have to be so concerned at the throwing stage of making it perfect. And I can make the angle of the, of the lid to fit perfectly for each of the pots. So um, there, let's go and... So, uh, Let's go and throw some lids. So as you see, this is way, way, way too much for, um, for the lid. Um, but it's no problem, because I'm going to throw it, as I said, too big and trim it down tomorrow. Which also means it doesn't matter if it wobbles a little bit. Now comes the funny part, because when I push it down here, it just needs to be, be wet enough. When I push it down here, the, the part in the middle is going to raise up for the knot. Unlike the jar, this doesn't actually have to be super centered because I'm going to make it way too big. And then um, tomorrow, when it's uh, dried up a little bit, leather hard, I will um, do the trimming and sizing of it. So I'm just going to make it flat. I'm going to keep some um, clay in the middle for the knob. And I'm just going to push it down. And you see, it's actually wobbling a little bit. That's because I didn't take so good, I didn't pay so good attention to it. It doesn't really matter um, because we're going to trim it um, tomorrow. I think I've got way too much clay on this one, but it's okay. So I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit more. So initial shaping of the knot. I got way too much clay on this for this knot, but um, it's okay. We'll trim it down tomorrow. Just gonna do the very basic shaping of the knot the way I want it. You see, this is I mean way, way, way too big, um, but that's no problem. It's just a very easy way of making the lids. Some potters may tell you that you need to pay more attention to your throwing and uh, so you don't have to do so much trimming. I like trimming <laughs> and for this kind of lid, it's just an easier way of doing it. So um, whatever works for you, works. And this works for me. I'm just going to let this one dry until it's leather hard, probably sometime tomorrow. Then I'm going to do the trimming. And I'm going to do three more like this. 
just gonna clean it a little bit so my shelves, drying shelves, don't get too muddy. <laughs> As you see, I have way too much clay for the lid, but it's fine because um, I'm going to trim it down tomorrow. And uh, I just found that this is a much easier way of making the lids than um, having to throw them exactly the right size. I'm just going to leave some um, clay in the middle for the knob. Just gonna thin it down, push it out, and then tomorrow we can cut it in the right size. And also perfect the shape of the knot. Just gonna take some of the slip away. It will dry faster that way. <laughs> so that's it. It only takes a few minutes to do it. And then of course we have a bit of work tomorrow, trimming it. Now the pots have dried to a little hard stage, maybe a little too much. It's always tricky with that because I had something I needed to do. I did wrap them in some plastic, so I hope they're okay. Now we need to uh, first trim the jars, just for the shaping and the lightness and whatever you want. Uh, and then I'm gonna adjust the lids, and that of course is the most tricky part of this. So let's go on with the jars first. Trimming um, the jars for little jars is no different really than um, trimming any other pot. I mostly do it to uh, thin the walls a little bit if I make them too thick, or if they're not even enough, and then um, to just uh, fine tune the shape to um, to my liking. So. Um, in this case, I just want to emphasize the roundness of, um, of this shape. Now I think the shape looks good. Uh, I'm not going to burnish it because I'm going to apply the porcelain and if I burnished it completely smooth and pressed in uh, everything, it would um, be harder for the porcelain to, to stick. So I'm just going to make it very smooth, um, scrape it like this. Also, do you know when you, when you paint uh, furniture or something, you, you, you grind it a little bit so it's got a little bit of a crusty edge and that will make the, the, the paint stick better. It's sort of the same with the porcelain. We, we, we don't want it completely smooth, but don't of course want it bumpy or anything. So this is what I'm trying to do. So yeah, that feels good. And now the tricky part about the, 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 the jar is to uh, fine tune the inside of the gallery. I want to make sure that um, the side is completely straight and then it ends up in a sharp corner. <laughs> I'm not so concerned about what falls in here because it's still a little bit tacky in there. So if I try to remove it, I'm just going to smudge it into the pot. <coughs> I just want to make sure that the corner here is sharp. <coughs> and if the flange is too big, I think this one is actually okay, but if it's too big, this is also the time where you can do a little bit of trimming. I'm not going to do much here, but you see my point. Um, <laughs> just be very careful when you do this because it's very easy for the clay to grab your, your trimming tool and then cut into it and then it's sort of destroyed as a gallery anyway. Gonna liberate it from the from this pet bat. <laughs> it feels so nice and light now. And now we're ready. It's ready for um, adding the porcelain. But I'm just gonna finish the. Oh, I've got all this inside here. Always have to be sure that your bat is clean when you when you turn it around. And then when you turn it around, you have the inside crumbles coming out so 
And um, I'm not going to trim a foot because it's a very, um, it's a very uh, thin uh, bottom. But I'm just going to clean it uh, so it doesn't need to have, be perfectly centered for this. Just going to tighten it with some lumps of clay. And as always, when you push the clay, don't push it into the pot. That's going to break it. You push it down to the uh, wheel head and then it's going to be secured. So, and uh, also remember that um, since we're not glazing, there's no, you don't need to make this bevel that I usually do when I want glaze to go all the way down. And uh, so, because there's nothing to stick to any kiln shelves, there's not any kiln shelves either. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that the button is, um, is flat and um, so it stands well on the table, whatever you put it. Just gonna smooth it with my um, finger a little bit because I'm not gonna add any, um, any porcelain at the bottom. Because it's okay that the bottom turns dark. Um, I just want the sides to have beautiful pit fire colors. And then I'm just gonna add my maker's mark here. That's it. Now we're ready to do the porcelain slip, but I'm just gonna finish the other pots first. And then we do them all at once. Also, another thing is <clears throat> you don't want any sharp edges. Uh, sharp edges uh, tend to um, chip off. So even in the, in the inside of the flange, I like to round it off just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, but if it's uh, completely sharp, it just tends to uh, chip off, break off. That was the last one. It feels so nice and light now. <laughs> it's good. And um, now we're ready to make the lids. And uh, to do that, it's of course important that we make them to fit perfectly. And um, to do that, I use a caliber. The two different kinds you can use. I usually just use this one. And you can measure the width of the inside. Um, you can also use this type. The good thing about this is that it's the same in both ends. So if you prefer to measure like this with this end, but then would like to use this for the for the lid, they're both the same. I usually use this one. So um, now we're going to take this first one and we're going to measure it. And um, also, please note whether you have it completely vertical. On my case, it's just going in a little bit. So I'm measuring the width at the top and then I'm gonna make it a little more inside. Now we can take this aside and make the first lid. So as you can see, this lid is way too big. That's what I told you when I made them, that I deliberately make them too big because it's much easier to trim off. First, I'm just gonna do some basic trimming um, before I cut it off. Because it's also too thick. And I want the knob to be a little more elegant. So right now it's just <laughs> like this chunk and I want it to be a little more slim in, in the root of it. But I'm just gonna finish the top first because when I, um, when I start to make, when I cut away this, it's gonna be very weak. 
when it's still wet, when it's fired, it's fine. But um, so it's easier to do the top first. It's more safe. See, this is my maker's mark, and I'm gonna put that right here in the middle. Try and do it right in the middle. And again, this is also good to do when you still have some stability in your knob. So, there you go. Now I can finish um, the shaping of it. And as you may have noticed, I haven't cut it off yet, and I won't cut it off, because on these kind of beds, it's going to release itself, and that's going to leave it completely flat and very nice and smooth at the bottom. So um, I will show you that uh, tomorrow, uh, I think. It usually takes a day or two before it's dry enough to, um, to release itself. So, I think it's beginning to look good. So now <laughs> comes the difficult part, that is to cut it at the right size. And we have the caliber here, just make sure that you didn't push it around or anything. And then I'm just gonna mark it up with my um, potter's needle. Potter's needle here. Just gonna make it lightly, and then I'm actually gonna cut it just a little bit bigger. Because you can't really add anything, but you can easily cut away something. I'm gonna cut all the way down to the bed. So. take this away and now as you see when I cut it this way it also gets a little bit um, uneven and um, that's why I like to cut it a little bit bigger because um, then I can smooth it and uh, make it look good which of course we want It's actually perfect now. So um, all I need to do now is smooth the edge and um, remove all these little crumples. And, um, and I want to make sure, because as I said, my pot have like the, the walls inside the gallery is like this, not that much, but a little bit like this. So I just want to undercut this a little bit. So that I'm sure it, it will fall into place. And now you may wonder about shrinkage, but this is going to shrink the same as my pot. So that's why we make it at the same stage. So the only thing left is to make a judgment on the height and as far as I can see, you can take a little bit on because I don't want to stick it. I don't want it to stick over uh, the, the the gallery, but also for this one, I don't want it to sit uh, too deep. And I mean that's that's an aesthetic question. What you like? But uh, this is how I like it. And I think for this one, I'm just gonna put um, porcelain on on the on the flat part but I'm going to leave this um, with the dark clay. I think that's going to be interesting. Mm. Now, of course, it's still sticking to the bed, but that's going to release itself in a couple of days. So let's do the next ones. Was this one. Now I'll do the last two. Now it's time to add the slip to the pot. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want a white surface instead of this um, 
dark iron based uh, surface. And this is actually going to fire, when a bisque fire, even darker. Uh, and so by adding the puzzle in, uh, we're going to get a smooth uh, white surface. And now you may ask, how can this work? Because the shrinkage rate between uh, stoneware and porcelain is very different. This is a very fine uh, British porcelain, Audrey Blackman, that are mixed up, and uh, have a shrinkage rate of almost 20%. And this stoneware have a shrinkage rate of about 10. That shouldn't work. But yet, it does. I think maybe it's got to do with um, adding it to a soft leather hard surface and just a very thin layer. I can't explain the chemistry behind it, but it does work. And uh, this, <laughs> if you look, it looks very gray. And first time I used it and it was gray, I was like, that seems a little bit strange. But as far as I've been able to find out, it's some sort of molding. It is summer, so it's warm. and uh, But it dries up. I can show you a couple of parts here. It dries up white and it fires completely white. So there's nothing wrong. It is a little bit smelly, but if it is some organic, you know, thing, it will go away. Anyway, I have used it. It works. So uh, I'm now going to add it to the pots. I'm only going to add it to the outside of the pot uh, because the inside doesn't matter. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, clay color. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to put it in the flange because that's going to be covered by the lid. So it's just the outside to make sure that we have a white canvas to work on. I'm going to use one of these Chinese brushes. They have um, proven to um, work well for me in the past. Uh, they have a nice combination of not losing hair, which you don't want, and, um, and being able to uh, hold enough of the, the slip. The slip is uh, somewhere around, you know, consistency of a little thicker than yogurt, I would say. Um, I want to be able to apply a thin layer and I don't want it to uh, run down the side of my pot, of course. Um, so uh, this has proven to, um, to work really well. First, I'm just trying to add it um, to get it all over the pot so there's no, no areas with nothing on. See this a little bit down here where there's nothing. Some people use their hands. I guess you can do that too. I just like to use the brush. It's um, it's worked fine for me. I do want the porcelain to be all the way up to the top of the uh, the rim, so that when the lid comes on, it, it looks like it's uh, this white surface all over the, the pot. And now I'm just going over it a few times just to make sure that it's smooth. Because again, we're not going to have any glazes. It's pit fire. So whatever surface we have is what we get. I will be adding a uh, tear cigalata um, after uh, this has been um, dried to bone dry stage. And um, so it will be more shiny um, than what we have now. But um, if there's any if there's any bumps or any any you know, lines or anything uh, that that will show through the uh, tears galata. So I want it to be as smooth as possible. I think I think this looks good. So that's it, and um, it's difficult to touch. <laughs> so therefore, I will have to move it on the bed. And now, after I added the uh, porcelain, they need to completely dry to bone dry stage before we can add the tear cigalata. That's going to take a few days. Okay. 
It's a bit tricky um, adding the puzzle in. I found that it has to be at exactly the right time. So um, the, the, the clay has to be um, soft, leather hard. So right after I trim it is the best time. If I let it dry too much, uh, the, the, the shrinkage have already happened on the stoneware and not on the porcelain, and, and it, it increased the risk of, um, of, the, of the porcelain flaking off. So the sooner you can add it, the better. Um, I assume that if you could, if you, didn't, if you didn't have to trim at all, and if you could add it right after you throw the pot, it would probably even be better. But uh, I always like to trim my pot, so I um, have to wait um, a day or something. But uh, trimming it as, um, as soft as possible, so um, the pot is not too dry for the porcelain, I think is, is probably wise to do. I mean, I haven't done a lot of testing with this, but it seems to work for me. Now just have to do the lids, and uh, my idea was to um, to just give it the porcelain on the flat part, but not the knob. And uh, yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll see. That's really fast. <laughs> Very fast. That was it, or at least for now, because now we uh, made the pots, we trimmed the pots, we added the porcelain. Now they need to dry to bone dry state. That's when I apply tersigalata. So um, the, the the time that I do that is not so sensitive as the rest of this process because bone dry. Once it's bone dry, it's going to stay bone dry. So whether I do it in a couple of days or in a week or two weeks, doesn't really matter, as long as it's bone dry. So I'm going to get back to you when the, the pots are ready for that. Now the pots have dried some more, they're almost leather hard, and it's time to see if they release themselves, the lids, as I promised. <laughs> so let's take a look. This is how I left it on the bed, and uh, I didn't do anything after I applied the porcelain. So let's see if it dried enough to release itself. Yes, it did. And look, it's just so nice and smooth. So I can just brush it a little bit and then it's perfect. So that's the first step and that's good. So uh, next, I wanna see if it, um, if it fits the pot. <laughs> Perfectly. I think it's okay. So, um, if in case it didn't fit completely, you can see there's a little bit of, um, of puzzling on the sides here. I think I actually may want to scrape that off because I don't want it on the sides. You can just use a knife and uh, just really, really carefully, just uh, gently scrape off. So at least there's no, no bumps or anything. So you get a clean edge. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's some small lumps of porcelain. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna scrape that off gently because I don't wanna distort the, <laughs> the lid now. Because the problem is if you, um, if I was trying to make a lid now, it would be really difficult to make it the right size because the lid I make, of course, would be wet and the pot is leather hard, so some um, shrinkage have already happened and um, therefore it's difficult to, um, to make the two fit. Also want to make sure that there's no lumps in here on the inside. I think it's all good. So. Um, 
that's it. I think this is going to be good. Now I just need to let it dry completely. I will keep the lid on uh, for now. I may take it off uh, at some point to make sure that it's completely dry inside, but just for now. It's a little bit of wriggling, but it's okay. And I think it looks good. Now it's been a few days, <laughs> a little more actually, because I got busy with some other things. But as I said, it doesn't matter how long you let it dry. As long as it's bow dry, it will stay bow dry. And that's what we need to apply the terracicolata. And please also note another thing. Remember when I applied this, it was gray. <laughs> and even though I'm not completely sure why, I do think it's some molding or something. Now that it dried, it is completely white. And it will be even a little bit wider when it's fired, when it's bisque fired. So now we need to apply the terracicolata. Terracicolata is, if you don't know, I have a couple of videos about how I make the terracicolata. I make it myself. It's very easy. But terracicolata is very, very fine particle uh, clay. Um, when we apply that, it's going to fill out those little holes that there are. You can't really see them. In a microscope, you may see them. But it's going to fill out those little holes. And then when we burnish it, it will be very shiny. And we want that for, for pit fire because we're not adding any glaze. So the only shine we get <laughs> is whatever we give it now when we burnish it with the tear ladder. And then in the end, after the pit fire, when we apply some wax or whatever you want to finish it with. So let's try and apply this um, tear ladder. Now there are two options. I could apply it uh, with, the, with the lid on. I could take the lid off and do it separately. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure. I think I will take the lid off. At least for this one, I'll try that. I'll just put it in some secure place here. <laughs> and um, then I will start with, um, with the pot itself. It's not so important that it's super centered. I just need to apply the Tessigalata. And as you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but it is super watery. It's got a specific gravity of um, about 1.15, uh, oh, oh, uh, so almost as liquid as water. I'm just going to apply it with, um, with the brush and uh, don't put it too thick and don't let it drip <laughs> because if, um, if it runs you will see those, um, those uh, runnings to the end of the pot. So um, we want it to be equal and um, with no drips, no running. And so it's better to apply a thin layer and then um, apply a little bit more. And you can see this also have a sort of a dark color and uh, don't let you yourself be confused about that because it will dry up, it will fire up um, very clean and white. Now comes the funny part because you need to burnish this to push in those little clay particles into the, into the pot. And there are many ways to do this. Um, some people like to use um, uh, some, some plastic or you know a, a spoon or something. I think it's just easier with a pair of gloves. I use these super cheap uh, polyester gloves. I think I got them from H&M store, but anything really cheap. And it needs to be a little bit tacky, not too wet, but not completely dry. Then you basically just run the pot and um, softly smoothen it with your gloves. And I think you can already see it now on the video, right? That it's getting shiny. Well, oh, I pushed it out of shape a little bit here. <laughs> um, you see, it's getting shiny now. And that's because basically we're pushing in uh, those very small particles into fill the small holes um, of the pot. There's no magic to it, although it does feel almost like magic. <laughs> so now you also see that there are some areas that are not, um, it's not completely even. <laughs> so I'm going to add one more uh, layer of um, Tessicolata. You don't want to add too much because 
the more you add, the higher the risk of the tears of lot flaking off. So I usually go with a couple of layers if I can get it um, even enough. <laughs> You can also add um, colorants to, um, to your tear cigalata. I have a video about how I added some oxides and stains to it. And that can actually look really good. Um, but in this case, I wanted the completely white surface. <laughs> but um, that's also an option. So, I think this is good. Now I'm gonna burnish it with my gloves. I'm gonna push a little bit more here and then I'm gonna hold uh, with the other hand because I saw that there was a few, not drops, but just a little bit of bubbles on it. So I um, just want to make sure that I got it all pressed into the pot. So, can you see how shiny it is now? I think even on the video you can see it. It's uh, super shiny and nice. Now the thing is, don't touch it with your bare hands because that's going to leave uh, finger marks and it's going to stay there till the end of the pot. So I'm going to put this aside. And now I'm going to do the lid. Of course, that should be really fast. I will also give the knob some tears ladder. We didn't give it um, any porcelain, so in the end you will be able to see the difference um, between just having tears ladder and also having porcelain underneath it. See, even on the knob where I didn't um, add any porcelain, it's still with the chair cigalata getting shiny. And uh, we want that. So, I think that looks nice. It's a little bit uneven, but um, with, with the sort of coloring that I want to do for the for the for the pit fire, I think it's going to be okay. I mean, again, it's not going to be a completely even glaze. It's it's going to be pit fired. <laughs> so um, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's going to be wonderful. I look really much forward to see how that turns out. So now I will do the rest of the pots, but I'm not going to show you all that because it's basically the same. Now they are ready to fire. They are dry after I burnished them, so I, there's no reason to dry them anymore. So I'll put them in the kiln tonight, and um, in a couple of days they should be uh, done, and I'll show you what it comes out like. Good morning. Now I'm ready to unload the kiln with the lidded pots. And as always, I know I say this all the time when I unload the kiln, please wait. I'm not a very patient person, but uh, it's better to wait until the kiln is cold enough to actually handle the pots. Because if you open it too early, 
You can damage the pots and also you can damage your kiln. The heating elements don't like that thermal shock of opening it when it's too warm. So please wait. It's now only less than 50 degrees Celsius, so uh, it's safe to open. I can actually handle the pots. So um, I'm very excited. Let's go and see how it looks. Ah, <laughs> so far it looks okay. Nothing exploded. <laughs> That's always a good sign. And it looks white. And you can see funny thing, this one is not so white. I didn't add so much stasic ladder. This one actually looks pretty white. Um, of course, it's wider where the porcelain had been added to. But um, I think we still have a good surface. Let's take a closer look. The first thing that I notice is that it's really nice and white. So despite the fact that we use this very dark red uh, clay, it now has a white surface. And that's good for the pit fire, because the colorants that I want to use, organic materials, are very subtle and not very strong colorants. And so it's nicer with a white surface. So I think this is going to work nice. And it's nice and shiny. Regarding the firing, um, there's a trade-off. The higher you fire it, the better the terracic ladder will stick and it won't uh, flake off as easy. But the higher you fire, the less shiny it will be. So lower firing, more shiny, more risky, higher firing, less shiny, less risky. So I found a trade-off with the way that I fire and the clay that I'm using. So I'm firing the bisque fire to a thousand degrees Celsius. That seemed to work good for me. It is not as super shiny as it could have been if I fired it a little bit lower, but then I had problems with flaking off. So I don't like the flaking off because that sort of ruins the pot completely. So I think this is a good trade-off. Another thing, <laughs> I did actually make a mistake. I do that a lot. <laughs> I forgot to clean the inside because I did some trimming and stuff and some little scraps dripped in there. I should have removed that before I fired them. But lucky for me, they were very loose because we just lose trimming, so um, they fall out very easy. So the pot is not destroyed. <laughs> it could have been. Uh, it will be difficult to remove it if it's uh, fired uh, into, I don't think you can see it here, but it's actually nice and clean inside. So I was lucky enough. And the lid fits perfectly. It even turns around so you don't have to fit it just one way. And this was the important part about making it circular and not warping at all, because you don't want to only be able to fit the lid in one direction. But this fits perfectly and looks good, I think. So that was it for now, because next step is to do pit fire. I'll do a separate video about that. I have a couple of pit fires coming up. Uh, going to try some new experiments with the uh, colorants. I'll get back to you on that. I hope you liked this uh, video. <clears throat> and if you did, please uh, subscribe, share, write a comment if you have any good or bad comments. Everything is welcome. And uh, I will have a new video coming up next uh, Sunday, usually around 5 p.m. Central European time. So um, I hope to see you soon again. Have a great day.